All right. I want to welcome Mr. Tony Merwin. Thank you. Tony is a master networker, master influencer, master power player, and a master at building agencies and teams. Okay, so he was on the Medicare Agency Masterclass last night. Freaking crushed it. Said a bunch of amazing stuff that I've never heard of. And it was really, really good. We had like 15 people sign up just yesterday. So it, it, it turned out really, really good. So thank you for doing it. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Awesome job. <laughs> what, what did you think of it last night? I thought it was awesome overall. I mean, yeah. I was about halfway through it. I got super juiced and was once we got into the real meat yeah. of the topic, you know, because it started off slow, just kind of yeah. talking a little bit about the opportunity. But once we got running, that yeah. thing really took off. Yeah. It was great. Yeah, it was good. So I, I actually had trouble sleeping last night. I was so pumped. Good, man. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Tony has a story to kick off the day. You ready? Sure. It's a good one. Pay attention. Okay, stay with me. This Sorry is... to hear about the Cardinals. Does anybody here a baseball fan? We got a lot Bre of them. Brett's the biggest. He's not here. He's the biggest. <laughs> Cardinals had a rough one this year. Yeah, they did. Well, has anybody, any of the baseball fans ever heard of a guy named Wally Pipp? Raise your hand if you have. Nobody? <laughs> Wally Pipp was an all-star first baseman for the New York Yankees. Nobody's heard of him. Now, granted, he played in the 20s and 30s, which is a little before most of our time. A little bit. But again, I'm going to say that he was an all-star first baseman for the biggest team in baseball back then, the New York Yankees. Everybody wanted to play for the Yankees. They were the team to play for. Now this was also back in the time when there was no plane travel. Calm down. Yeah, no plane. Right, so everybody had to travel by bus or train to get from game to game. They generally had to play about 150 games straight, no days off. So they might have a game in New York, it goes into extra innings, for example. They gotta jump on a train, travel overnight to Chicago, or maybe they have a doubleheader. Right, so they're sleeping on the train, they wake up in the morning, get quick showered, out to play baseball. Right, pretty rough time. A lot of us complain about having to come to work five days a week and we get a weekend. These guys are playing 150 games straight of baseball. Well, one day, Wally Pipp walked up to his coach, Miller Huggins, and said, hey coach, I got a headache. Don't really feel that well. Do you mind if I sit out today? And coach Miller said, yeah, no problem. Have a seat on the bench. I got a guy we can come up, this rookie kid, he's been looking for a chance. So they called up this guy by the name of uh, Lou Gehrig. <laughs> you may have heard of him, I'm not sure. Well, for his first day in baseball, Lou Gehrig had a monster game. He had five chances to bat and he hit four times. He had a single, a double, uh, I'm sorry, he had two singles, a double, and a home run. Three RBIs, scored a run himself, he even stole a base, nine fielding opportunities, made zero errors. Well, pretty phenomenal game for your first day in baseball as a rookie playing for the Yankees. So Luke Gehrig decided, hey, that was pretty awesome. I want to take a day off too. But not until he played 2,130 games straight with no days off, earning him the nickname, the Iron Horse of Baseball. The guy didn't stop. He played with the fractured leg twice. He played with broken digits nine times. It got to the point where the players on the opposite teams, now they wore metal spikes back then. The guys would slide into first base instead of just running across and trying to trying to spike him, see if they could get Lou Gehrig hurt. So they'd get him, they'd cut up his leg, he'd just pull his sock up a little tighter. No big deal and keep playing. The guy was phenomenal. Now if we know the rest of Lou Gehrig's story, it's, it's unfortunately fairly tragic. He was succumbed to a disease that they even named after him, ALS disease, which eventually became Lou Gehrig's disease. He's inducted into the Hall of Fame, they have statues of the guy, and he shattered records that still stand in baseball. What happened to Wally Pipp? Anybody got a guess? He was traded to the Cincinnati Reds the next year and then forced out of baseball for a poor work ethic. Now I tell you that, not because I expect you to play 150 or 2,130 games straight, which equates, if you do the math, to I believe a little over seven straight years with no days off. Of course they get off season stuff, but that's still phenomenal to be able to push yourself that hard. But I tell you that because a lot of times we forget <laughs> when we're in these sales environments, we're in our own little bubble. And we're only competitive with the guys that we see around us. And obviously it's friendly competition. But you have to remember that this is a huge nation and it is a huge business. And there are other people out there in this space doing the exact same thing you're doing. Looking for the exact same insurance agents, the exact same prospects, selling a lot of the exact same products. 
the day that you decide that I want to sit on the bench, your competitor is out there coming up and he's hitting the hell of a game and he's taking your business away from you. So you have to remember to push yourself and always remember that there is somebody right behind you itching for the opportunity that they can land that big prospect on the phone, close the deal and get that business and take it away from you, right? So just remember that and remember to push yourself day by day. Don't give up because success is on just on the other side of the door of not giving up. That's all I got. How about that? I'm not kicking off the day like that, man. That's awesome.